Hi, it's Amélie. Um, today for just practicing, we're going to do the Ave Maria by Gounod, um, which is on top of um, Bach's Prelude. So if you have any questions during the live stream, um, just ask them and uh, I'll answer them. If uh, there are questions related to that piece, I'll answer them right away and other questions maybe more at the end. So yeah, I'll start. I didn't play yet, so I'm going to do a few notes. Okay. Um, this uh, this uh, live stream is sponsored by Tom Play. Uh, Tom Play is an app where you can buy different pieces and you get the music you get recordings so you have a recording of um, the flute part the piano part and flute and piano together you can play with the tempo you can um, stop and start you can you'll see because I'll be using it in the live stream today so um, I'll start and then I'll see what I have to say about it oops it's not in the beginning wait it was in the beginning where to play I click here and then I press play so you see here it's 70 beats per minute but if I wanted to I could click here on tempo plus and it gets to 88 but if it's too fast I can go slower and slower you see and I'll put it at 70 70 it's fine um, and I have the piano for audio
Okay. So, um, I don't have that much to say about this piece. It's uh, not that hard to play. Um, I guess the main things um, would be. Uh, ooh, ooh. It's okay. Sorry. Um, I just made something fall. So the main thing would be to um, um, to breathe enough because they're long phrases and where to breathe, manage the air because sometimes we we release all the air at once, so you have to be careful with that. Then there's dynamics and maybe vibrato as well because you don't uh, you can use vibrato as a tool to be more. Um, be more expressive. Okay. Is there any question yet? No, everyone loves everyone loves it. Okay. People thought you were out of time for it because of the red line in the head all the time, but that's the thing I love with their system of things. Yeah, that's right? why I don't follow on the app. I follow on a on a sh on a the. Yeah, the sheet music. I well print it because print it, yeah. it's it's yeah you can print it and it's a tiny bit ahead. I think the point of putting it ahead is that when you read music, you usually read ahead, and it's like you have a little buffer in your head mm -hmm. <laughs> that goes, mm -hmm. you you read, and then you, you put it in your short-term memory while you're playing. That's how we can be on time. So I guess maybe that's why they put it ahead, but for me, rhythmically, it's uh, confusing. So I'd rather just listen and... Uh, you can, yeah, you can also turn off the red line if you wish. You can also turn it off in the... In, in the, in the Option Maybe we should do that so yeah. that people don't feel yeah. that the visual and the yeah, auditory don't, don't do fit yeah, together. Don't do that. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, also, somebody wants a shout out. Esther wants a shout out. Says hot seat hands. Hi, Esther. <laughs> there you go. You've done your, I think you've done your first shout out ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So at first I was low. It's pretty high. I think it's probably 442 or. Or I'm my flute was uh, not warm. Okay, uh, I'll do it again without piano maybe. And um, yeah, I'm gonna take a big breath. crescendo too fast because I saw crescendo and I started being too loud and then it didn't do a poco a poco which is little by little uh, when I see a crescendo usually I try to start piano and then this way I have space to uh, get louder uh, so that when you get on the climax at 13 on that high C um, you're actually uh, louder you know than let's say here 13 so when you get on the on 13 on the highest note yet um, you know like a singer when they get their high notes it's it's intense so we should think about that you have a lot of, of time to breathe there so you can um, take a good one just before the first note and then at eight you can take one you have a lot of rests uh, so that whole section is not too difficult for that and then when you when you vibrate, be careful not to do this. I hear that sometimes. It's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Um, or vibrate all the time, or you know, just um, in the beginning, I'm not even sure I would vibrate it. play with it you can not vibrate in the beginning and then start vibrating and then the next note maybe you start vibrating and then you stop it
something like that so for now it was pretty easy uh, the breathing and uh, yeah i tried to do the dynamics if uh, you have difficulties with dynamics we just released a video about dynamics and there's an exercise in it that's uh, pretty good it so you can look at that video and also practice this exercise that's in it that goes long tones once loud once soft and you can compare them and try to keep the same uh, intonation as well uh, that will be very helpful when you're trying when you're playing pieces like that that are about expressivity and uh, dynamics are a good way to get that so I think I was around 20 now so I'll start on from 20 a little bit more air around 33 so I'll move it 33 wait okay yeah you see because you go in the high register um, one thing okay when you're when you think you don't have enough air try not to collapse here keep keep um, your chest open and push with the the deep abdominals okay like if you don't feel your deep abdominals you can do a breathing exercise so you keep your belly tucked in and when you breathe in through your nose you open your chest and then before you breathe out you bring your your uh, ribs together so already you feel the abs and then you blow out and you feel the abdomen, the deep abdominals, the transverse, and, and on the side, the, um, doesn't matter, I don't remember for now, but um, obliques, I think. And they're the ones that can push the air. When you think you don't have any more, but you, d you still have a little bit. So I had to do this there, and I didn't collapse here. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll bend forward a little bit to help the abdominals push more, uh, but not from the chest like this. I tried to keep it open. And put air in your back you know feel your shoulder blades going away from each other so you have more air and when you want to breathe in a lot of air sometimes it's not about uh, sucking it in as much as making space in your body for it to be able to come in so just open everything and it's gonna come in instead of trying to push it in or pull it in by force and if if the space is not there, it's it's not going to be an efficient breath. I don't know if that's clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody wants to know how Deborah wants to know how do you play that low C so smoothly? Mine sounds horrible. Okay, it can be a lot of things. If you're scared of it, then you might be doing an extra movement that's uh, disturbing your sound. Um, yeah. So usually uh, we overwork, we overdo things because we are thought that if you try harder it's gonna be better and this week I was listening to a meditation podcast very interesting and the title of it was try softer and um, I thought it was great I spent my week repeating that in my head try softer especially when something's bothering me try softer 
uh, maybe there is a way is a place to try softer so don't overwork don't move too much things like I'll do it again that I didn't move much I just put warm air also one thing that could be happening is maybe your your um, ring finger is not covering the holes the hole well usually when one hole is not covered well it's this one because it's a bit more difficult a good way is to put a plug there there's no shame in putting a plug in your flute it won't change your sound it's totally fine I would advise to put a plug that goes inside and doesn't go get out because that's not comfortable like you'll feel it and you might not like it but there are very good plugs you put it in there's some in um, in metal with a little bit of um, how do you call that the thing for the corks cork yeah. yeah cork and metal they're good those ones and uh, maybe it's just that maybe you just need a metal plug there mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody wants to know how do you play, how do you articulate, articulate so soft and sweetly? Okay, so when you articulate, it's um, what you're actually doing is that you're interrupting the air for a split second, and then when the air comes back, it's um, it makes that you know that it's starting again. Um, so I think about that really. I try to. Um, are they talking especially on the first note because usually that's when people have issues on the first note so what I try to do on the first note sometimes I don't even tongue okay sometimes I just go like this so the mask is there you know I make the mask everything's there I just start blowing sometimes I don't do that sometimes I put my tongue just behind my teeth well you know you have the teeth and the roof of the mouth and then I put my tongue there and then the air is there okay everything's ready I'm supporting and the air is there just behind the, the tongue and then I remove the tongue when I want the sound to start so there's different ways uh, sometimes I use pe. it's the same principle as putting the tongue out so I'm there, my lips are closed, and I open them, but the air is already there, the pressure is already there. That one, it's mostly for higher notes. I didn't use it there today, but it's yeah. it's a something you can use. Somebody wants you to show them how to play low F and low C. The fingering. Okay, <laughs> so that's F. You have three fingers here, like a G, and you add one finger, so you have F. It's the same if you do first octave or second octave. It's just the way you blow. And then low C, uh, it's like a low D. Those. And you add um, here your pinky, your pickle C, like this, yeah. On, not on the E flat key, but on the other keys there. This is C sharp, and then this is C. And if you have a B foot, this is B. Good? Good. Okay. So I talked about the air, I talked about the dynamic, the vibrato, that's pretty much it. I can continue. So 38, you have to start soft again, so that's the articulation thing. Oh, also, sometimes when I want to do it softer, I'll use more de than t. So, you know, just be aware of where you put your tongue when you say those sounds. So if you say ta, 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 and you... Okay, that's where I put my tongue. And then when I say da, 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 okay, my tongue is a bit less t -t -t like this and a bit more da, 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 da. So it's going to give a different sound, a different articulation. So if you're looking for something a bit softer, a bit uh, less percussive, then you might want to use da. And, you know, like in English, you say more to or I don't know, the, the T is not exactly the same maybe as in French. So, um yeah so i think that's why some people say there's different articulations depending on your language that uh, but ta 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 yeah i think it's okay ta 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 oh yeah ta 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 yeah it's different so try to say ta ta or yeah ta 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 and see where your tongue is and then da 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 and try different sounds and you'll see different 
little subtle things that your tongue is doing and then you just use that when you play the flute so you don't even have to learn something new it's just using what you already know so i'm gonna start from 38. they're a bit like waves they go do, 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 do. and re really um you know shape it phrase it um don't get cut into the counting too much you count inside but outside there's this long line you know uh, so now i'm here at uh 42. of a whole big phrase so it, even if you're breathing try to breathe with the idea that you're not cutting the phrase the breathing will be part of it and then you continue that phrase so it's not If you hear the difference but I'm gonna do it again with a longer shape I think I illustrated it. I don't know if people heard the difference, but it's not just if, if in your mind it's in, it's clear that that phrase is long, you're not going to breathe the same way as if you see it as three separate phrases or three separate motives. You know, they're not separate. They're together, intertwined. And there's a lot of that here. And always keeping in mind that long phrase, that long line. Okay. So I'm at 57. Here I guess uh, I'm gonna try it with the piano because I have to hear that you know to be really precise because I think I might not be that precise with the with the 16th notes I'm gonna start here Here. 
wait until I hear. And then I, I have to be on time with that. So that's pretty much it. Dynamics, vibrato, breathing well, ma managing your air, not putting everything at once, making a lo long phrases. Uh, even when you're breathing, keeping in mind that the phrase is continuing. It's not like... It's... It's not the same way of breathing. So you, I think it's pretty clear when I do this. Or... You know, there's kind of less of a stop. Like the breathing in is part of the breathing out type of thing. I think it helps with the, the phrasing if you do that this way. So is there any question? No, can you play through one more time? Yeah, I, I do a uh, last last call and last, uh, <laughs> last run through. <laughs> last call. <laughs> oh, somebody does have a question. Uh, how do you sustain your breath so well? Four bar phrases are really hard for me. Um... It's about, uh, well, there's there's a part of it that is um, um, with time, you know, exercising it. There's different exercises you can do for breathing. Um, so sometimes uh, we still have air, but our body wants new air. So one exercise you can do is just take air in and then keep it in for 20, 30 seconds. And your heart might go boom, boom, boom at one point when you're not used to do it because it wants new air. Uh, and then you blow out after that. And you can do that a few times a day while you're driving, while you're doing it, whatever. That's a good thing. You can also practice with a metronome. Um, you can put it at two. Uh, no, what am I saying? You put it at 60. Can you give me? Uh, okay, so let's say you put it at 60. And you breathe in two, you breathe out two. You breathe in two, you breathe out four. You breathe in two, you breathe out six. Okay, so. I think you get the, the gist of it. So you, you can do that. Um, if two becomes too long, you can do by, by five. So you breathe in two, you breathe out five, you breathe in two, you breathe out 10, then two in, 15 out, two in, 20 out. So you, you learn to manage your air, but still you have the same time to breathe in, but you have more longer to breathe out. Also, um, one thing that's very good, a lot of it is about awareness, so posture, Taking bigger breaths, opening your chest, opening in the back. Um, that's a big, big one. Opening the um, shoulder blades, making space in the back because you can put a lot of air if you open the back. And then not putting everything out at once. And to practice that in De La Sonorité by Marcel Moïse. So Marcel Moïse, De La Sonorité. I think page 10, you have a series of exercises that go crescendo, decrescendo, and you have to breathe and then you do it again. You can start a bit faster. Um, let's say you start at 80, and if you're comfortable doing the exercise at, at 80, you go down and down and down until you get to 60. Um, and this is interesting because you have to do crescendo and decrescendo, but still manage your air. How much air do I need to get through that whole passage, you know? Because that's a lot of it too, not going, <sighs> taking a good breath and then go <sighs> all at once. You have to manage it. So that's a very good exercise uh, to do. Good. So now I do the one last full piece. notes. <laughs> I'll do it again.
twice I changed the 8th note for a 16th note um, but it doesn't matter I think a lot of people play it like that so I probably have a conception like that in my head so any other question? Uh, I don't see any uh, I remember I really liked it there's also a delay so people are going to probably clap and stuff now <laughs> uh, but yeah so let's see uh, some, Ben just said he just found you guys uh, found us when uh, she was he was searching for Morceau de Concours, okay, and he's very happy that uh, he found you guys and you're doing a great work. 
Maybe you want to talk about Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Maybe you want to talk about all things that you're doing. Maybe a little bit about Patreon, the yeah. online studio, and so our merch store. Last uh, week, Nicola was at the Patreon convention yep, in, in Los Angeles, and he learned a lot about Patreon. So if you want to learn more about Patreon, you, you can go on Patreon. Uh, and we have one where you can uh, help us. So there's different perks and uh, different tiers. You can give as little as $2 a month. And now our, um, our um, podcasts, the live version of the podcast will be on Patreon. Uh, and so you can access that uh, yeah, through the, the Flute Talk podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it helps support us, basically. Yeah, it helps support us and be able to create content. Um, so if you want to be a patron of the arts with us, it would uh, be very cool to go and visit that page. Yeah, it's patreon.com slash the flute channel. Patreon.com slash the flute channel. And also, if you're looking for a flute, uh, you can go and check the Flute Center of New York, uh, flutesforsale.com, the number four, and use our code TFC where you will get perks, um, longer warranty, uh, longer trial, more flutes you can try, uh, free shipping. Um, and then also it helps us when you buy a flute with our code. So that's another way to help us if you're buying a flute. And uh, if you're interested in having private lessons on Skype. Oh, what was, the, what was the, the, the site name again? Flutes for Sale with the number four, flutesforsale.com. And our code is TFC, like the flute channel. So, yeah. And then we also have pretty cool merch now. Mm -hmm. And that's at the store.theflutechannel.com. Store.theflutechannel.com. Yeah, we have and we have, um, we have a poster with all the fingerings, all the scales, and the also, I think, the trill fingerings. Yeah, so it's been... very fun. Like, you put it in your room where you practice. People have been wondering how huge it is. It's pretty big. It's big. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's black cool. and white version. And a so you can really version. see well. Yeah. You know, you're practicing. You can practice so. all your scales like that and arpeggios mm -hmm. and everything. It's very cool. Uh, we have that. We have shirts. We have uh, mm? a, mug. <laughs> a mug. All types of cool things. You want to show that you're a flutist at work. <laughs> shirt, we thing? have a Flutron shirt to show you're a flute patron. Coolest name ever. Yeah, Flutron. Um, yeah, and if you want, um, if you're interested in having lessons uh, online with me privately and uh, one on one, it's at. Okay, so info at theflutechannel.com. Yeah. And you email us there and we'll give you all the info. Yeah. Also, just to go back on the Flute Center of New York, they ship anywhere in the world. Okay, so yeah, the Flute Center of New York, it's not only for the United States, they ship everywhere in the world. And the deal works for anybody on the planet. And the deal works for everybody on the planet. So yeah. But not on Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> just on this planet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. They um, don't ship in space. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Oh, do they have second, third, and fourth hand flutes? Yes, they have the largest use. Oh, yeah, they have used, new, they have the largest selection in the world. It's crazy. We went there. Yeah. There's a video it's of us, time, or yeah. a couple of videos of us there, I think. Mm -hmm. And, well, if you look at the video where I was sight reading with uh, Jasmine Choi, yeah, right, 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 right. Um, it's at the Flute Center of New York, and you can see a lot of oh, flutes in the background, and it's like, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so, cool. yeah. Yeah, and they're very friendly, too, when we go visit there. Yeah, because we went there, and Jasmine Choi was there, and we said, want to sight read and play something, and she was cool, and we did that. So you can go and check, and you'll see their their uh, offices yeah, in they, the background. Yeah. I only think they have silver flutes only. They don't have ethnic flutes, just silver flutes. Oh, they have the modern flute, yeah, like this flute. flute. Yeah. I don't think they have ethnic flutes. No, no I not, didn't yeah. see any there. Um, yep, and then what do we do here? Uh, okay, so how do you hold your breath for so long? This is from Deborah. So let's have a listen to this instead of something else. Okay, so how do you hold your breath for so long? Uh, you mean when, when you take in and you s don't do anything? I guess go this <gasps> thing, yeah, just, or making phrases long, you know, like how to, you know, without breathing in between phrases. I guess that's a big question. A lot of it is posture, because if you have a good posture, you can breathe better. Okay, so if your posture is uh, poor, okay, let's say I'm a slunch a bit like this, okay? Well, it doesn't breathe in as well as if I'm like this and, and I can feel everything opening and then all my muscles 
are in a good position also to push it out and also not push, not just, because what I see sometimes is this. So just taking air very high and then, because there's not much muscle control here. So you just go and that's it. But you need to fill up completely and then use your muscles, not only to push the air, but also to keep it from going all at once. like this it's um it's like anything else you can train your body mm -hmm. to do it this uh, i think i read somewhere that people who do um apnea um uh yeah. diving yeah, apnea. Oh, okay. you know they they don't use the Tank. yeah no they Tankless, go like yeah. whoosh, like you see in the i don't know if you saw that movie the big blue le grand bleu it's a french movie with uh those guys and they just want to go lower and lower and they do all those breathing exercises to go lower but there's some i think i've heard that people who do those things they their body changes they get a bigger heart and bigger lungs their body adapts because they train so much in uh, breathing and all that stuff so they can go lower and lower and longer and longer inside the water without an air tank so i guess it's probably the same thing as a wind instrumentalist or um, as a flutist probably through time if you exercise in the right way your body probably adapts and uh, yeah but if you train you're gonna get better but it's a lot of it is about awareness of your body and yeah if I you know sometimes if I see the person I can help more but that's what I can say for now mm -hmm. this is, is it Deborah that we know I know it's not Deborah that we know no. this is Deborah that's lit watching with his her First and second flutist. She's a first flutist, and the other ones they're both watching at the same time, oh. and they're both in an orchestra together. Oh well, hi Deborah. I think they're from. I don't That's know where so they're cool. from. I think from England, I think. Um. Okay. Last question. Um. Uh. First, what's the email address for lessons again? Info at theflutechannel.com. For lessons. Yeah. If you want lessons, uh, and you want to know how it works, just in email us at info at theflutechannel.com. Okay, um, this is a bit ex existential question a little bit, but like, how do you get the right sound on the flute? How do you get the right sound? Okay, well, a lot of it is about awareness uh, as well. You know, just like today I didn't play before I took my flute this morning for this um, live stream. I just took it, but I know how to place my body. I know how to open my mouth to get the sound that I want. And also I have a very uh, clear image. It's not an image. It's really a sound that I have in my head that I know that's my model. That's what I'm aiming for. So that's that. And also I try to be um, nice with myself. So if on the first few notes, it doesn't sound good, I'm patient and I can say, okay, it's gonna get better. I know how to play the flute, you know? Uh, instead of uh, feeling insecure about my sound and then stressing and then probably what will happen is that some muscles will get in the way of, of what I want. I'm gonna overwork, as I said before, uh, try softer instead of trying harder sometimes. Just be kind to yourself and uh, have this idea of the sound that you're aiming for and let your body do it. Yeah, I don't know if that's clear. Cool. Yeah. But there's a lot of other little things, you know. Mm -hmm. But we have videos about embouchure, how to get your sound better. How yeah, we have a couple. Yeah, like 150 so videos, like yeah, you can play with. yeah. There's a, a lot of videos about the more technical aspects of sound. Uh, if you're interested in that, go check in our playlists. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, um, that's what I was thinking. Do you want to sign off? Okay, so I hope uh, this was helpful. If you like the video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and see you next time. Thanks for watching.